All right, Gail, you ready to see your brand new rental? Mike, give me six. <laughs> Welcome into the Fearless Flip. We are so excited that you joined us to get in the home of an expert that is working on a project here locally in Fresno, California. This is no expert that you might be used to. This is one of the best experts in all of not only the Central Valley of California, but in probably the entire nation of real estate investing, especially when it comes to buy and holds. His name is Michael Zuber, and check this out. Michael, in 15 years, built up a rental portfolio in Fresno of just under 200 homes. And guess what? He doesn't even live here. He lives in Mountain View, California, two and a half hours away. He had never even been to Fresno, let alone spent a night in Fresno, when he decided that he wanted to invest in Fresno. Why, you might ask. Well, I'm glad you asked. We're about to find out right now. Yeah, you heard it right. Uh, almost 200 rental properties, not even living in the same city, the Michael Zuber. Uh, he's used to just going ahead and grabbing his phone and being on camera and when he's got an idea, he goes for it. But now uh, you're being interviewed by me. So I really wanna uh, ask you, first of all, um, like where did that idea come from and how in the world did you execute that? Well, the idea came from, uh, I did self-assessment on my 30th birthday. Uh, and really what I found out is while I had made a decent income, I had nothing to show for it. Uh, I looked at my bank account and, and didn't have nearly anything saved. Uh, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and it kind of shook me to my core and realized that I had wasted an entire decade of my life. I just knew there was a better way and according to Rich Dad Poor Dad it was buy and hold rentals and uh, I jumped in. Awesome. So now to the reason why we're out here on a noisy street because of the fact that we're at a project that Michael's currently working on and it has to do with just exactly what he talked about, one rental at a time. So before we get too far, I want to make sure that you definitely go check out his YouTube channel and also uh, one rental at a time .com because there's some awesome information there and uh, honestly life changing. But let's talk about this project behind us. Two houses, one lot. What do you got here? Yeah, so one of the things that I've done, so I was lucky enough to, again, build a portfolio that allowed me to retire from a day job. You can still buy your own stuff, which I do. But you also have the skills to identify what I call slumlord properties, which are frankly boarded up or should be boarded up. And because you have the capital now, you can go in and turn those around and create assets that you should have bought when you started. So now what I'm doing is and what we're standing in front of is I bought a slumlord property cash. Uh, I also have um, a network of private lenders, which you'll meet one later, who will be my partner on it. But then I sell what I call a pride of ownership rental. And by pride of ownership rental, it means everything's done. The floor's done, there's new heating and cooling, there's a new kitchen, there's hardwood floors. And in this case, my investor who, who was my partner is gonna get a discount because they're my investment partner. So everybody wins. Let's go ahead and meet our investor. Here is the investor, Gil Fleming, local to Fresno. And Gil, I gotta ask you first of all, um, you know, it's obvious why you'd be attracted to what Michael's doing. He's been out there doing it for a long time. Uh, but why were you attracted specifically to this location? I have to tell you, I listened to several Michael Zuber YouTube videos and he convinced me of something. Okay. You know what that is? What's that? I have a problem. Okay. <laughs> with crap. Crap, crap, crap. If you are suffering from crap, which is cash rich and asset poor, we can all do better. Being cash rich and asset poor is a disease. And it's a disease if you don't own and fix and go after, it's gonna be a problem. And I can make over 6% on these two small houses on this plot. And I looked at this and what are they, what's the problem with being a landlord? Tenants, termites, and toilets, right? But if I'm not buying a beat up property, but I'm buying a property that Michael Zuber has supervised, putting it back together, brand, you should, in this video, you're gonna see what this thing looked like just a couple months ago. My God, it's gorgeous. You know, and, and it, it was a piece of crap before, <laughs> but, but now I believe I can buy this, they're gonna put tenants in, and I bet I won't have maintenance issues for five years. I think if this doesn't work out for you, you ought to start your own YouTube channel because you're also a character. <laughs> All right, you ready to take a look and see what this house looks like? I really want to see what I'm buying. All right, Gil, you ready to see your brand new rental? I want to see it. Here's your one My bedroom. Gosh. 
So here's the general living space. Obviously brand new floors throughout. New heater. New heater. New lights. Very nice. New windows throughout. And if we take a look in the kitchen, you can see we put in a, basically a brand new kitchen, right? Same floors. Michael, why this floor? Uh, what we want to do is we want to put in laminate flooring because again, as a landlord, you want things that generally will last multiple tenants so you don't have to replace every time. The other thing that you will see in all mine is, and you've been in a couple of them, uh, they're always the same floor. They're always yeah. the same two-tone paint. They're always it's the there. same cabinets because uh, I work with different general contractors and part of my job is to make the flip as smooth as possible. So I try to reduce decisions. So everybody gets the same floor, everybody gets the paint, everybody gets the same windows. Uh, which if makes... this needs to be replaced, you know exactly what to replace it with. Is that a fact? Yeah, we basically came into the kitchen and you'll see in the video and I said, I said full gut. And they always know what that means. That means new lowers, new uppers, new plumbing, new, new uh, countertops, same flooring. Um, again, I, I try to reduce decisions. Why is the flooring good for you as a landlord? It's because it should survive multiple tenants. That's the real reason. Now this granite, mm -hmm. this is in style. It yeah. looks nice. Yeah. Is this a good idea? Uh, again, it is because the, the option for a landlord is you could put in Formica, which generally speaking when it's new, Formica and granite can appear the same way. Uh, however, having owned rentals for 15 years, Formica, as soon as the first tenant moves in, probably not even the first month, maybe the second month, it starts to wear, it gets wet, and sometimes you'll have to replace it before the tenant leaves. I'm trying to build these as pride of ownership rentals, so I'm making decisions that will last decades. All right, so let's go check out the bedroom, because again, this is your one bedroom. So again, we, we use the square footage best we can, brand new windows, we two-toned the paint, again, always the same, baseboards, brand new pad and carpet. And then if you go just this way, we will go into uh, the bathroom. You need to have three things. You need to have the vanity, uh, you need to have the tub, uh, shower, and then obviously uh, your toilet there. And you showed me this before you even started working on it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Michael, why don't you just put a shower here? <laughs> well, a couple of things. First off, a shower would have saved me money. Uh, probably would have been faster. But again, I'm trying to build a product that's good for landlords long term. And you got to remember who's going to be in this house. It's probably going to be a mom um, or, or a family that's going to probably have kids. And generally speaking, kids don't like stand up showers. Yeah, so remember the one thing I told you when you're buying this, you got to get rid of that tree eventually. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, because it's, it's getting really close to the side yeah. and uh, eventually it's going to be a problem for you. By the end of the year. Yeah, gone. absolutely. And again, see the side yards fenced in, all ready to go? That's again, it's gonna be a plus. They can have the kids there, some toys, bikes, or dogs, whatever they like. All right, Gil, so let's check out your two bedroom. The big house. The big house. The exactly. big house. And guess what? It is going to look the same. See the floors? They look so familiar. <laughs> same new windows, same heater, same cooler. All right, this again is gonna be the general living area, so it's the same laminate flooring. Again, just like the small house, the same deal. Car new carpet, new pad. We two-tone the paint wherever we can. We did in this one have a little bit more character. Oh yeah. Right. So we every time we can't save it, we do, and then we always call it out with you know the lighter of the two colors. All right. So in the bathroom, it's going to be the same kind of story. We put tile on the floor. Uh, it's the most resistant to water damage. Just general use, wear and tear. Vanity, tub. We shower the walls because again, you know, people, kids splash, parents get splashy. All right, so let's go into the kitchen. At this point, it should look very similar, right? No, it doesn't. It looks totally different. <laughs> what happened? It was tiny. Oh, yeah, as far as uh, the kitchen, we, we did open it up. Uh, Wasn't there a wall here? Yeah, this actually, this doorway was smaller than that doorway uh, when we moved in. It just didn't make, it didn't flow. It didn't at all. And here's the second bedroom, which is obviously going to be the master. It's quite large. Uh, clearly, this was a garage, uh, but this, this was framed in probably decades ago, long before we had it. It was already framed in and, and uh, you know, drywalled and insulation, so we didn't do any of that. We just cleaned it all up, new floor, new pads, and again, new windows, new closet, and again, this will be the master bedroom.
So Gail, after seeing both of those, I really only have one question, right? I've done lots of properties, I own lots of stuff, but I always like to ask, what'd you think? I really think this is not, this has got to be a winner. This has got to be a winner. I got the best property in this area. I got all sorts of market to be tenants here. Uh, I think they're going to want to live here. I think they're going to want to keep it up. And I really thank you for getting me on the road to real estate. Yeah, that's that means a lot to me because again, one of the things I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to help people get started. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help them buy assets that I know I should have bought when I started. Sure. I wouldn't know how to fix this up. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to start. I don't, I don't have the interest in learning it. I don't have the time, energy, any yeah. of that. So yeah. uh, I enjoy taking Slumlord properties and turning them into something. And I'm, yeah. I'm really going to be happy to, to hand you the keys. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, six keys, 6%. <laughs> Slumlord to pride of ownership. It's something I didn't even know about until I talked with Michael. Now it's something I want to implement as I'm building my rental portfolio. I hope you will do the same thing. Make sure you're connecting with Michael, one rental at a time .com. Check out his book. He loves tagging people on Instagram. If you end up buying his book, uh, you take a picture, tag him in it. He'll do the same thing for you. And of course, check out his YouTube page. I bet you can't guess what the name is. One rental at a time. You got it. And if you haven't checked out the podcast we did with him, make sure to do that too. He really dives in deep into these strategies that we're discussing, especially when it comes to pride of ownership. That's the thing that he's the most proud of. Uh, and when it comes down to it, that can be found on www.fearlessflipping.com forward slash Michael Zuber, or just go to the podcast and search for Michael Zuber and you will go ahead and find that. Now, it's your time to conquer real estate investing. We'll see you next time. Pride of ownership, what, what an amazing uh, strategy. It's something that I wouldn't even have thought of until I actually interviewed Michael, but it's so simple. It's something that I would suggest you all do. I'm going to start doing that, and I would definitely suggest that you also connect with Michael, one rental at a time .com, and check out his book. His book's good, one rental at a time .com, and you can probably guess what his YouTube page is called, too, along with Instagram. It's one rental at a time. Yep. Go to our show notes for our podcast that we did with him too. That is something you're going to want to check out. He really dives in deep into these strategies that he's discussing and discussed on the Fearless Flip. Fearlessflipping.com forward slash Michael Zuber. If you're not already subscribed to our podcast, definitely do that. Check us out on social media, Fearless Flipping 316 on Instagram. And it's your time to conquer real estate investing. We will see you next time.